point. So we are here for uh, how to start and optimize your business. This is the second of four parts. And today we're gonna to be talking all about how to start your own business. Um, so again, uh, just some housekeeping. This is the second of a four part series. Um, for those of you that have just joined us, there will be a recording of the first part, uh, all about WCC resources um, on YouTube. I am still waiting for that to come back from captioning. So as soon as that is available, I will email out a link to all of the participants in that webinar. Um, Again, all of these sessions are being recorded, so if you do not want to be seen, please make sure that you go ahead and uh, make sure your webcam is off. Uh, today's agenda, we have a 30-minute-ish presentation on how to start your business. Uh, we've got a five-minute or so presentation, again, just on entrepreneurship courses. Um, we're going to have a Q&A session. Uh, that will go for as long as possible, and then we'll finish up uh, again with our enrollment services presentation and closing remarks. For more information, so if you have general questions about the webinar, um, about WCC, or anything like that, please feel free to email me um, at lcward uh, at wccnet.edu. Um, for very specific business information or questions, please feel free to contact the Entrepreneurship Center at entrepreneurship at wccnet.edu. Also, I think I may have forgotten to introduce myself. My name is Lauren Ward, and I am the coordinator of the Business and Computer Technologies Division here at WCC. Um, so with that, I am gonna go ahead and um, stop sharing and turn this over to Anthony so that he can introduce uh, himself. Yeah. Hello, everybody. How you doing today? So I'm uh, Anthony Terry. I am uh, lead faculty over the entrepreneurship program and certificate program here at Washington Community College. Um, you know, I, I ventured off in a couple of businesses myself, and I've also been teaching for the last, you know, uh, what, 12 years as well, from business to marketing to entrepreneurship. So. Um, this series is really put together to, to give you a step-by-step -step understanding of, you know, what it takes to be an entrepreneur, the things and the resources that we have here on campus at Washington Community College, and how you can utilize those particular tools to start your own business. So these are stepping stones and little pebbles that we're throwing out there to you to get a grasp of all these pebbles so you can put your thing together for yourself. So from that, I can pass it on back to Lauren. And yes. Um... So with that, uh, anyone that is from Mr. Terry's uh, classes, if you could let us know in chat. Um, so just list your name and then what class you're taking. Uh, that way we can make sure we have it recorded for any extra credit purposes. Thank you so much, Lauren. Yeah. Um, Robert, Courtney is on with us and he's gonna be one of our guest speakers. Do you wanna introduce yourself real quick, Robert? Sure. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Okay. So, uh, yeah, my name is Robert Courtney. Um, I am what they call a serial entrepreneur. Um, started in 2007 um, and have been an entrepreneur ever since. Um, I own three companies. Well, I own two companies now. I recently sold one, but I, own a barber, I owned a barbershop called Unique Barbershop in uh, the city of Detroit. And then went on to start a clothing line called Unique Collection, um, which is uh, 11 years old. And then uh, in 2014, I launched a company called Robert Courtney and Associates, which is a marketing and branding agency um, where we teach and um, manage marketing strategies, social media um, strategies, and uh, brand activations for several uh, verticals around um, the city of Detroit and beyond. So uh, it's a little bit about me and I'm uh, looking forward to talking to you guys a little more. Awesome, thank you. Um, and now I'm gonna turn it over to our Entrepreneurship Center folks. Uh, Erin, if you wanna handle those intros. Mm -hmm. Hi everybody, my name is Erin Ellie. I'm a manager with the Entrepreneurship Center. And a little bit about me, um, I used to be a graphic designer and I was a freelance graphic designer and worked for myself for some time. 
um, and then went into social work and studied community organizing. And so have been here for about, with the Entrepreneurship Center for about two years and a manager for about a year. And so um, I really love connecting people to resources and helping them thrive with their businesses. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Kristen Gapsky, our director, to introduce herself. Thank you, Erin. Hi, I'm Kristen Gapsky. I'm the director of the Entrepreneurship Center. I'm gonna speak very quickly, but I just wanted to say a quick thank you to Lauren for organizing all of this. For Anthony or to Anthony for being here and speaking and um, helping to organize it as well and then also to Robert Courtney and Karen Driggs so we've had you both before and we appreciate seeing you again so thank you for coming out and and, and speaking your experience to us thank you and actually I'll throw it to Tia from the Entrepreneurship Center Hello everyone, I'm the Entrepreneurship Center Assistant. I've been with um, the group for about seven months now. I attend Washington at the moment for human resources classes, but I also have a background in fashion marketing and minor entrepreneurship at, from Eastern. And I'm gonna hand it over to Claire, our entrepreneurship coordinator. Thanks everyone. Hi, my name is Claire Abraham. And I am a coordinator at our Entrepreneurship Center. I've had the privilege of being at the Entrepreneurship Center for a little over five years. And I love working with our clients who come in today. So we'll talk more about that. Um, I have a background in library and information studies. So I'm really passionate about the research process that goes into starting a business. And I will give a brief introduction um, of Karen Driggs, our second guest speaker today. I um, echo Kristen and everyone to say thank you. We are so grateful that you're here with us today, Karen. And I've written a brief intro, but feel free to hop in if I miss anything. Um, so Karen Driggs is the founder of Sleepy Cricket Healthy Vending Company. And her company provides an alternative to traditional vending machines with healthy food choices. They've sold healthy vending machines to businesses and organizations in our area who are seeking to improve the health and well being of their clients or employees. Um, Karen is also an active blog writer and she markets her business by putting out current information on her industry, on nutrition, and um, she is also working on a currently working on a guide to how to start a small business and kind of her background on that. Again, we're, we're so grateful that she's here with us today to share her insights and um, really grateful to have witnessed her growth into a successful female business owner um, over the years. We've known her, she stepped into the Entrepreneurship Center, I believe in 2016, and it's just been a pleasure to um, see her her growth of her business, and she participated in the Entrepreneurship Center's first annual pitch at WCC event, a pitch event where she won the first place prize in the grow category. So thanks again, Karen, and Thank you. <laughs> add anything else. Um, if you want to add anything else, feel free. It was terrific. It was terrific. And, and I will say, going back even further, I started my business in February of 2015, and I think I was at the Entrepreneurial Center by March 1. <laughs> so um, I have a long, you know, five-year history with the Entrepreneurial Center. And, and as you'll hear when I speak, um, uh, really positive things to say about the opportunity to build and, and grow a business with their care and, and, and support. Great, thank you so much. And Lauren, I can Yeah, um, all right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get started with our presentation. Um, so our presentation today is gonna be split up into three parts. We're gonna have a piece where we're talking about marketing, um, a piece where we're talking about writing a business plan, and then also the final piece will be uh, registering your business. Uh, if you have any questions throughout this, please put them in chat and we'll be monitoring it, asking those questions um, or answering those questions for you in chat, as well as bringing them out during the Q&A portion um, of our webinar today. All right, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to our marketing expert, Robert Courtney, and he can take it from there. 
Okay, so um, I usually go through a full formal presentation, but since we don't have that much time, I really like to just make sure I bring some value to uh, anyone that need marketing help or is looking to start a business and uh, kind of break it down to what I think are some of the most important things that you can do when you're getting ready to, to launch a brand or, or start a business. And um, for us, based on our experience and based on what we see, um, it really kind of boils down to five things when it comes to getting your message out there. Um, the first thing is really clarifying your message um, of what your service is and, or what type of value you're trying to bring to your consumer or the, the people that you're targeting. And uh, we find that a lot of people struggle with, with that. And so um, really putting thought into what is the purpose of my business? What is the why for my business? And then really, really um, summarizing that message for yourself before you even begin to put it out um, for other people. Um, the next thing is understanding where your audience is. Obviously, social media is a low cost barrier um, and a lot of people tend to use social, uh, but truly understanding where will you engage your biggest audience. Um, there's so many methods to reaching people and at the end of the day, building an audience is an integral part to um, being able to build and grow any successful business. You need people to respond and engage with. So understanding um, where your audience is. The third thing is how do you distri distribute your information or your product or your service to that audience? What are going to be the most effective ways to get that information out there? So identifying your distribution channels, whether that's Instagram or Facebook, whether that's SMS through text messages, whether that's email marketing, it could be direct mail, it could be TV. You need distribution channels to get your information in front of, um, in front of people. The next thing is once they have that information and once people are responding, how are you collecting that data? How are you identifying who the people are that are um, interested in what you have to offer? And so um, that can be done in a lot of different ways. You have landing pages, you have um, um, uh, a lot of online tools that you can use to gather, gather information. If you're a restaurant, you may have survey forms that people can, put, but there needs to be a way to collect information so that you can evaluate where you are, how people are responding, and then you can adjust um, accordingly. After all those things are done, really it's about rinsing and repeating, right? So analyzing that information, adapting, changing, modifying, um, and then redistributing that information um, across the board. We help hundreds of, of businesses and companies Needs to do this online. Um, that is our expert area um, where we help them define that message uh, over, over, and over again, and then distribute it across social media channels. And so, what we've tried to become really good at is understanding what audiences live on what platforms. So, if, you know, if you have um, if you have an uh, audience on you could have an audience on Instagram that's really good for a particular product. Facebook might be a, you know, a really good place for you to network and build business and build a relationship. LinkedIn, Twitter, all these different platforms where there's audiences that already exist. And then this process of gathering data, analyzing data can be done in real time within those platforms um, by means of DMs or comments or shares or things like that where you can engage with your potential customers and really get real-time feedback on how you can adjust and make your um, product or service better. And so um, those are the, the five areas that we I feel is probably the most important in marketing um, a company effectively and quickly. Um, and then we have an acronym that uh, really applies 
or would apply regardless of the tools of that particular time, whether you know, we are in the 50s and 60s or whether we're in 2040, 2050, um, this acronym, we call it TAC, which is A-T-A-C-C, -C, little interesting spelling, but it stands for audience, trust, attention, content, and consistency. So I'll say that one more time. Uh, audience, trust, attention, content and consistency and so by applying these five things regardless of what tools are being used email marketing text mess uh, sms marketing social media marketing online marketing it doesn't really matter um if you're if you're doing those five things it applies in any scenario so um i love to talk more i can be reached by any of you at any time at Robert Courtney Collins um, at gmail.com. That's Robert Courtney Collins at gmail.com. If you are um, on social, um, my biggest platform is probably Instagram. That's probably where I'm the most engaged. Um, I can be found there at Robert Courtney Collins and uh, would love to answer any questions. Like I said, I know we have a brief window. Um, if there's going to be some time to answer questions, I'll stick around for a bit. But um, hopefully, those five principles that I mentioned at the beginning, if you guys really think through those and implement those, it'll really get you off to a good start. Thank you so much, Robert. Um, I want to interject one question uh, that I have. Um, I, we've gotten a lot in our pre-registration phase of uh, the webinar series, and that um, goes back to kind of your second principle on where is your audience? Um, where, what kind of platforms do audiences, do you find audiences? Well, every platform has an audience, right? Okay. So if you're looking for a professional audience, you probably want to be on Instagram. If you're looking for an audience that likes quick information, um, that is filled with visuals and things that can be seen, Instagram is probably the pl place for you. Um, if you're looking to build conversation and, and network and um, put out shareable content, Facebook is probably the place for you. So every platform already has an audience. So our goal is to leverage these platforms to find the audience that's best, the best fit for our product and not to just limit ourselves to those platforms. And if you have a platform that's working for you, how do you extract the information or the people from those platforms so that they can become your customers and you can have kind of a direct um, communication with those people specifically, which would be done obviously through, you know, phone number or an email address. What? Thank you. Um, so yes, if you can please uh, stick around to our Q&A session, we'd really appreciate it because we have tons of marketing questions. Um, but for now, I am going to go ahead and turn it over to Karen, who will be discussing uh, business plans. Hello. Am I, can you see me and everything? Yeah. <laughs> I see you instead of me, so it's, all right. So um, as Claire told you at the beginning, I started a small, healthy vending company in um, February of 2015 and grew it from zero to, um, in 20. 19, I ended the year with $106,000 worth of sales. I had 16 machines in 10 locations, 10 different customers, and two part-time employees. And um, as a result of the business, I took roughly $40,000 out of the business in personal and business expenses that kind of came back to me. And without diving too far into that direction, um, you know, just remember when you have a small business, as an entrepreneur, you don't necessarily right away make more money than you do in your day-to-day, -day, you know, nine-to-five job, but you keep more of the money because you pay yourself first. Um, and then whatever, whatever's left after you've done covering your business spec expenses is what you, you know, report to the IRS and, and pay taxes on. So you, you're able to keep, keep more of the money that you make with a small business. So um, with that said, um, I, I would say, when you're thinking about running a business plan, 
I always like to equate it to an exotic vacation, right? You've decided you want to go somewhere spectacular in the world and you want to figure out where are you going? How are you going to get there? What are you going to do while you're there? And how much is it going to cost you? And that is really the way that a, a business, a good business plan works. It, it starts with background information and it helps you define, you know, what's your concept? What is it that you're selling or you're making or you're doing um, that you're able to profit from, right? So that's the, the background portion. And then you go into your business operations. You know, how are you going to do this, right? Um, day to day, what do you need to do? What do you need to, to what are the, the materials or the, the services or the skills that you need in order to make this business work? And how are you going to run it on a day-to-day -day basis? And then the third thing that a good business plan does is it explains your financials, right? It, it tells you how much is it going to cost me to get this business started? What's it going to cost me to keep this business running? And how soon am I going to see a profit from this, right? Because there are always startup expenses with a business that you may not gain back for a distinct amount of time while you're building your business. Um, Part of business operations include sales and marketing. Um, you know, Anthony did a great job talking a little bit about marketing and, you know, we can go into deep dive with each of these things, but I think, you know, my intent with introducing the concept of a business plan is to just share with you, you're just trying to explain who you are, why you're, why, what you're doing, why you're doing it, right? What are you trying to accomplish here and what's it going to cost to get you there? And it, it's really a snapshot of your concept of your business. So it, it defines what your business is and what your intent is with this business, but it doesn't necessarily go absolutely granular. It's just kind of an overview of your business. Um, and and it's, it's a way for you to better understand your place in the marketplace, right? Part of, part of your um, background information is going to kind of express, you know, what are your plans here? What are the day-by-day -day steps that you're gonna take? And why are you uniquely qualified to do this? You know, those are some of the questions that you answer as you go through and develop your business plan. I think it's um, important to know about your industry. You know, what, where do you fit, right? In my case with healthy vending, I fit in with um, businesses, you know, active businesses, any location where people are coming and going, or a group of people who have to stay put in a specific place and, and might get hungry or thirsty. How do I define that? Where is the best place for me to go? And, and you know, Claire and the, the, um, the Entrepreneurial Center can provide you not only with a roadmap for constructing a business plan, but the tools that you need to research each of these areas to help you kind of fill these three holes or these three silos with, with good information. Um, also, the Small Business Development Corps, I, I know that we, we talk about this, and I think at the end we're going to have a link to it, but the SBDC, which is basically across the hall from the Entrepreneurial Center, they will um, assist you with developing a business plan. But it's, it's important to recognize as well that you may not need a full business plan when you start your business. You might have a small concept that you want to just test a little bit and, and you know, begin to develop it. Um, I think it's really important that while a business plan is, is a backbone and a, creates a structure for you, it's not absolutely imperative. Don't get, don't get so caught up in the, the planning phase that you don't tr start dabbling and trying and, and building your business. I think sometimes people think that you have to have the entire vacation planned, where you're going to stay, what you're going to do, where you're going to eat. Most of us, we book a plane ticket or we, we book our or make our, our car plans, you know, where we're going to go. We go there and we sort it all out once we get there. Maybe you've booked a reservation for a hotel, maybe one special restaurant, but basically you're winging it a little bit. And a small business is the same way. You, you know where you're going and, and how you think you can get there, but you may have to adapt it as you go along. You may have to make changes. It's a living document, a business plan. It's not set in stone. Um, but you will, at some point, you'll need it. You'll, you may need it if you want to secure funding, if you want to go and present to a bank and, and get a significant amount of money, or if you want to start a GoFundMe campaign or, or other online venture for procuring funding. You're going to be, again and again, you're going to be asked, what's the background on this business? 
what's your operations plan, and what are the finances? You're going to have to answer those three questions somewhere along the way, whether it's in the process of selling your business, or if it's in the process of growing your business, or getting funding for your business. Those things are questions you're gonna answer along the way. So I would just say, um, as you're preparing to start a business, sit down and really go through the at least early stages of business planning to understand what it is that you're doing and begin to develop a plan. Um, it, as I said, it's not, it's not in stone. You can adapt it later. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be adequate enough to inform you and give you the confidence to move forward that I have something that's a viable business here. I have something that's going to make money, whether it's a service or a good or, or an intangible. Um, you have something that's viable and you have a sense of what you're going to need to get yourself to the people who can buy from you and make your business successful. All right, thank you so much, Karen. Um, again, if you have any questions during these um, talks, please put them in the chat and we'll be answering them uh, during our Q&A portion as well as um, just within the chat itself. Uh, but we're going to turn it over to registering your business uh, with Erin. Okay, everybody, I'm going to share my screen here. So let me know if you can see this okay. Oops. Okay, I'm going to go into presentation mode here briefly. So can everyone see my screen and hear me okay? Um, so we are the Entrepreneurship Center, as we introduced ourselves before. So I'm going to briefly go through some of the information that we have about us. Um, a lot of this we shared in our first presentation, which I know a lot of you attended. So for those of you who didn't attend the first presentation, if you would like that slideshow again, we'd be happy to share that. Again, we are sharing it on YouTube as well. Um, and then we can share this one too with you. All the blue links are linkable so that you can go to the resources that we're talking about. Um, so this is our team. We all introduced ourselves earlier and feel free to contact any of us um, through either our website, which Kristen shared in our chat. Thank you, Kristen. Um, ec.wcc.edu or email us at entrepreneurship and we will all receive the email and respond to you. We also have a, an assistance request form that you can fill out if you have specific questions. Um, but before we get started, I just wanted to thank, again, I wanted to echo what Kristen said. Um, thank you, Robert, Karen, Lauren, Anthony, the whole EC team, our whole team, everybody for um, putting this together and attending and sharing such great information today on marketing and business planning. Thank you all so much um, for participating in our in this webinar. So um, briefly, some of the EC services we talked about in our first presentation, but I'll just go over again. We'll share this with everybody. If you do want to book a virtual one-on-one -on -one consultation, either with Claire or I, um, we do have links to do that and we have resources that then we can share. Um, we do like to meet people where they are and provide resources to anyone at any stage of business. So if they're in the idea stage, um, as, Chris, or as Karen mentioned, you know, we can help them through those ideas, through those, uh, those business planning steps and give you the tools to work through those ideas. Um, we also offer free webinars. We have our newsletter, weekly newsletter, and you can sign up to learn about um, not only campus-wide events, but community events as well. Um, and then you can meet virtually with an entrepreneur in residence who has maybe somebody who has more expertise either in business planning, marketing. Um, we have somebody who works with artists and creative people specifically, or in idea validation, just working through your idea. And then we also have market research, which Chris, Claire will get into a little bit. Um, and with that, Claire's going to share some brief business planning um, resources before we jump into the registering your business. Yeah, great. Thank you, Erin. So this will be a pretty relatively quick overview again with um, Karen's background in um, the business planning process, which is a great, great overview. These are just some slides again that do have links to external articles and templates and resources that you will be receiving. So for example, this slide has a video um, with a kind of starting with the why behind your business, which I love that Karen brought up um, figuring that out as a good um, one of the initial steps to um, 
brainstorming your your business idea. Um, so these go over kind of that why again as as well as a self assessment tool. Um, the next slide, another question to consider is what type of business are you um, focusing on, and that can um, go through different types of questions, whether you're a product or a service, whether you're selling to businesses directly like Karen did with, with um, Sleepy Cricket Healthy Vending, or if you're selling to clients or consumers, um, as well as things like your legal status as a for-profit, a nonprofit, or a hybrid, which Aaron will get into that legal formation process in a bit. The next question goes into a little bit of the market research aspect. And this is something we discuss um, if you utilize the Entrepreneurship Center and talk with our staff. Um, market research comes up a lot in the pre-business planning or business planning process, or even if you are running a business already and, and need some data on your, whether it's your industry, um, potential customers or competition. Um, the, I'll just say really quick with market research, there are librarians at WCC who can help with individual consultations, whether or not you're a current student. So you can utilize that and we can, we can tell you more about that. And this um, slide also links to some great templates that are out there and things like worksheets to go over um, some information like revenues versus expenses, um, things like that, that I know Karen brought up um, when she was looking into her business planning. So these are great um, blank editable templates that you can use. And the next slide, this might look familiar to some of Anthony's um, students in the entrepreneurship classes. This is the business model canvas template, which is a great tool. It's a visual model. So we have um, bigger versions of this, of course, when we're in, in person in the center, but we can send you um, digital formats of this and editable formats through the center. So please get in touch with us if you want to go over this or get copies um, through online copies right now. And I think, um, so this one, again, gives you more um, background on the business model canvas and more links on how to fill this out. And I think finally, we have a, a link for, as Aaron mentioned, the Entrepreneur in Residence program through the Entrepreneurship Center where there are free appointments available with local entrepreneurs who are experts in various fields, including the pre-business planning process, that you can talk with one of our entrepreneurs about that. So please, again, get in touch with us if you are interested in, in these services. And with that, I think I will hand it over to Erin to go into the registering your business. Thank you, Claire. So I wanna talk a little bit about registering your business, which, um, there's a lot of great information here. It might not seem like the most exciting topic, but it's really good information to have when you are starting a small business. Um, and so there are a, there's a lot of information to take in. And so um, what Claire and I do is we're connectors. We connect you to information. We try to give you the information that you, so you can carry out your own research and make informed decisions for your business. And then if you are seeking um, advisors or somebody we can always make referrals to somebody who maybe is an expert on various topics um, and so we have a great there's a great list um, on the sba.gov website that kind of goes through all the types of legal formation options that you can have um, and then we also have more information on the state of michigan and what that means um, so sole proprietor might be somebody who is a freelancer that's running their business under their own name um, and then doing business as is somebody who maybe is going to file with the county and it, in each, whoops, each has its own, um, own um, <clears throat> variables that they have to think through. 
Um, and then I'm going to pause here on limited liability company, LLC. I would say most people that come into the center are asking about what it takes to start an LLC and want more information on starting an LLC. Um, and so we often link people here to the howtostartanllc.com website. Um, this is a great website because it's a guide that it not only explains what an LLC is, but it takes you through all the steps you might need to make um, in order to form your LLC. And then it links you to the exact forms because navigating um, your state's website can maybe be daunting or tricky. And it actually takes you to the forms that you need to fill out in order to form your LLC. Um, I'd always do say, be careful with clicking, you know, when you clicking on a third party site, um, making sure it does take you to the Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs. So check the URL for Lara, L-A-R-A, -A, um, or the michigan.gov website. Um, but it does take you directly to the forms that you would have to fill out here um, so that you can get started. Um, so I'm going to take you back to the web, to the presentation really quick. Um, there's also partnerships and corporations. So there's more information here that you can read about those entities as well. I would say primarily though people um, are asking about LLC information. And then nonprofits too. I do have to say we have a lot of nonprofit um, people who want to start nonprofits or nonprofit organizations that come in and they want more information on it. And so we actually have an entire section on our library guides just for nonprofits and not only nonprofits, but looking at options in terms of giving back to the community. What can I do? Can I start a nonprofit business, but still support my community, give back to my community in some way or start um, people often call it a social impact or social enterprise business. Um, so we have a lot of different information and a lot of great resources on that. And we would be happy to talk to anybody about any of these if they want to um, talk further about their business. And then um, this is great timing, actually, because one of our favorite um, LLC resources is the SBDC, which Karen mentioned, Small Business Development Center. And they are right here in Washtenaw County, and they hold a really great monthly online workshop. Um, called Starting an LLC or DBA, Do It Now is online and they are still um, providing resources virtually. Um, the next workshop happens to be Monday, October 12th from 2 to 3.30. Um, and I and Kristen added their website too to the chat. So if you want to link on there, um, we're also going to share this presentation. So then you can register for the event as well here through the presentation. Um, but it's a great opportunity to really walk through those steps and walk through um, everything it takes to not only form an LLC, but think about the practical information in terms of managing your bookkeeping, managing your taxes. Um, and they carve out a really nice chunk of time for Q&A at the end so people can ask questions and then you can connect with a consultant as well. Um, so if you can't attend Monday's workshop, they do offer it monthly and we link to their workshops here. They have a lot of great information on their site in general. And then I'm just gonna talk quickly about some marketing resources um, and kind of to support what Robert shared. Um, we have some additional resources here on our website that people can utilize to kind of think through those questions. Who is my customer? Who do I want to attract to my business? Social media, where do my, where do my um, customers spend the most time? And then working through your marketing strategy. And so we have some great um, resources here to and tools to help you work through your marketing and your branding strategy as well that we'll share with you after the event and a follow-up. And then we do have a marketing expert and entrepreneur in residence who primarily talks about marketing. So if you're ready to develop your marketing strategy and you want to talk to somebody to really work through those steps and work through your ideas, um, this is a free resource as well and they are um, meeting with people virtually. And so Claire and I would be happy to connect you to any of these resources to talk further, to answer any of your questions and to connect you with an entrepreneur in residence, potentially. Um, and then questions, I think before we get into the Q&A section, I just wanted to say, if you do have additional questions, feel free to email us. It will go to all four of us and then we'll, we will respond to your question and or we'll research the answer for you so we have it. Um, but with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Anthony to talk about the certificate. Anthony, I think you're on mute. Yeah, 
uh, the, the entrepreneurship certificate program is a great program in Washington. So some of the things that we're talking about today, we, we go in detail in, in several of the classes. So for the business model canvas, uh, entrepreneurship too, we go over that thoroughly or whatever. So you can put together your canvas, your business plan. We start off in entrepreneurship one and talk about a business plan and through one, two, and three, we work on it each and every uh, session. And by the time you're finished with uh, the entrepreneurship program uh, and you get the certificate, you will have a, a business plan in place, um, a web page in place, and you will be pre prepared to do pitches as well. So we do a pitch in each one of the classes as well. So what we do is show you how to do a pitch and the things that need to be presented in the pitch. And as you know, at Washington, I know we're COVID now, but uh, before, and I'm, I'm hoping in the future, we will have a pitch as well uh, at Washington that you can uh, compete at and, and also get money there. Entrepreneurship Center does a great job at putting that together and, and we'll see what happens in the future. But for your business, you need these type of things to be put in place or whatever for you to start and be prepared to handle and, and compete against other businesses going forward. So the entrepreneurship certificate is a great opportunity for you guys to not only start your business, get your business registered, but also a uh, stepping stone to get your business plan and prepare yourself with a pitch as well. Lauren? Oh, yes. Okay. So I know we went through that really briefly. Um, I'm going to send out a flyer on some of our winter entrepreneurship classes to you all, um, just so you have some more uh, information on that. Uh, but we do want to get right into uh, Q&A. So I have some questions from everyone that submitted them during the registration. So I'll start with that. If you do have any questions that come up during the Q&A, please uh, ask them in chat and we will get to them. Uh, so the first one, um, and maybe I'm going to throw this over to Robert, uh, is how do you promote your business um, if you're an introvert? Um, how do you handle social media advertising when maybe you, you, you're not used to that? Well, um, you know, social media is actually great for the introvert because there's so many different ways to share content and to deliver a message. Um, you don't necessarily have to be the most outspoken. You don't have to be the person that, you know, is always in front of the camera or even talking um, per se. There's so many other ways. If you're a great writer and you're good at articulating your information um, through written word, then uh, spend your time collecting pictures and visuals and then do your explaining in the actual captions of your, of your posts. Um, if you are not good in virtual settings or in front of people, but you're okay when you're within private settings, then maybe you wanna record your videos ahead of time and then distribute those um, pieces of content across a different platform. So it's really about establishing your best form of communication. And then once you figure out what that is and what works best for you, then beginning to distribute that information consistently. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so another question that we got, um, now I'm going to open up to anyone uh, on kind of a panel here. Um, so what risks and barriers exist for people who want to start their own business? Yes, Karen. Make sure you unmute yourself. So, you know, this is a great question because there are risks inherent in any entrepreneurial venture whether it's your risk of you know, using time, um, spending time away from your family or your job or your, your, your um, other passions in life in order to do this, you might have a loss of time. Um, certainly if you're putting money into starting a business, there's the risk of losing money. Um, there are always risks inherent in business. And the, the difference between someone who is willing to become an entrepreneur and somebody who doesn't want to pursue an entrepreneurial venture is the ability and the willingness to accept that risk. Um, and also the ability to persevere. I think, you know, vending is, is um, a strange industry. There are lots and lots of people who, who open vending companies and close them very quickly. Um, restaurant businesses are notorious for opening and closing. You know, th there's a certain amount of risk. And as you're doing your research process and you're working with the Entrepreneurial Center and the, and the Small Business Development Corporation, there are actually published statistics based on industry and business type to show you, you know, what percentage of those businesses fail within five, five years of, of operating. And 
when you when you start to um, find those numbers out and identify those risks, that's really part of your research process is to identify what are the potential re risks. What happens if this doesn't go? What is the worst case scenario for me? How much time can I afford to lose? How much money can I afford to lose? Right. And you have to make those calculated risks to determine whether starting an entrepreneurial venture is right for you. I will say in my case, um, I was unemployed when I started my venture. I had lost a, lost a role, I had been downsized and thought, this is it, I gotta start my own business. That's not ideal. <laughs> I will say that is not ideal. If you're able to start a, a business while you're working and can balance your time so that you have a steady paycheck coming in while you're working on your startup, the best case scenario and the, the best way to mitigate risk is to have the luxury of a paycheck while you're ramping up your business. It's to have a good savings to cover shortfalls if your business doesn't take off as rapidly as you expect it to take off. So this is a wonderful question and it, and it really speaks to the essence of being an entrepreneur is having that willingness to take on some risk. Thanks. Um, Karen, a follow-up question uh, from Josh. Uh, he asked, if I wanted to create my own line of vending machines, where would be the best place to buy resources to build the vending machines? That's an interesting question. Um, there are, are a large number of global manufacturers of vending machines. Um, and I found that because of the economies of scale, it was much more cost effective for me to purchase them from companies that were making hundreds of thousands a year at a price that I could afford. My suggestion would be if you have some ideas for a unique type of vending machine to work with an existing manufacturer with your plan or your, your patent, um, whether you sell your patent or you, or you develop your product and you have them build it for you, um, anytime you're building machinery, the sooner you can, you can take advantage of economies of scale, the better. And obviously, I, I would be willing to talk to you offline more specifically about what you have in mind. But as a, as a generality, you want to do the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And if you can go to somebody who's already manufacturing hundreds of thousands of machines and create this adaptation that aligns with your, your concept, that's where you're going to be able to make money at it. Um, so another question that we have, and I'm going to shoot this one to Anthony. Um, how would you start a part-time business or a side business? And I think Karen touched on this as well. Uh, to, to have a part-time or, and I give some of my background or whatever as well. Uh, I also, I referee and officiate high school and college sports, which is part-time. So what you need to do is find a something. We already talked about risks, but part-time things are more passion. So find something that you're passionate about because you got to realize if you're working full time and you're not passionate about going out there and doing something else or whatever because you're tired, it's not a good idea. So find a passion that you have and something that can grow into a full-time business in some cases because um, we had one uh, entrepreneurs on campus. We had a, a, an official come there. He's a, a, a professional NFL referee, which makes you know $10,000 a game or whatever and things of this nature. You got to have a passion and something that you know that long-term will be something that you can sustain in terms of a full-time employment as well. So passion be the first thing you would look at in terms of part-time entrepreneurial type of ventures. Um, so moving on from that, and maybe our EC folks can help with this question. Uh, what is the average time that it takes to start a business? There. Yeah, I can answer that. I can answer that. Can answer oh, that. Claire. <laughs> it does. It depends on... Um, that's a really good question. And like we, everybody was talking about, it depends on how much time you want to put into your business and what you're passionate about and taking that time. And um, I started as a part-time freelance designer when I was working full-time. And so I would carve out that time and commit that time. Um, it depends on what your product and service is. So if it's something where you are seeking wholesale materials, it might take more time as opposed to somebody who's um, maybe a writer and they want to start putting their work out there and start connecting with clients. Um, so I would love, love to talk to this person offline too, actually, and hear more about what the person 
takes time and what the person um, is doing in order to kind of learn about what they're doing so then we can talk about some time management. We have some really great time management tools too for those folks who are maybe starting part-time or who um, are in the planning phase. And I think, um, Karen, you made a good point about, you know, even if you're writing a business plan, it's not necessarily linear. Um, you can start getting out there, serving people, finding out what people want, where can I fill the gap with my business and my passion and thinking about those things sort of in a circular way as opposed to a linear way. So yeah, I would love to talk to that person offline if um, they, they want to talk further about that. Um, I like to add to that. Um, I think there's, a, you know, there's the traditional thought process that a lot of people apply when it comes to the steps necessary to start a business. Um, once upon a time, pre-social media, pre, you know, digital access, you did have to go through necessary steps in order um, to feel like an actual business. Now, the only real difference is, you know, do you want an actual brick and mortar place? Do you want an actual team? Do you want payroll? Do you want to, um, what level of business are you trying to accomplish? Within the next hour, I could have a product, have a, a, a website, be able to accept a credit card payment and offer a service to people that's willing to pay for it. Um, I can fill out a form online to get my LLC. I can do literally everything necessary to run a business within probably two hours um, of being on my computer. So I think that, you know, when, when people, especially students or, or individuals that's not familiar with um, running a business or starting a business or entrepreneurship, it's a huge factor that scares and deters a lot of people from doing it because they don't understand um, the nuts and bolts of really the idea that running and starting a business can literally happen like that. Um, and I agree 100% with Karen in terms of, um, in all actuality, just getting started is the biggest factor. Like you have to start, even while you're doing your business plan, even if you're not selling a product or offering a service, it's super important to at least begin developing your audience because these are going to be the people that's going to support you, the people that's going to purchase from you. So why not start informing people what you're planning to do, creating hype, building buzz, introducing them to your product or service, educating them about your product or service. So when you hit the button and it's time to actually sell, the work is already laid, the foundation, the foundational work is already laid for you and you can kind of get business started right away. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a really great point um, that, that is being made is that, you, you know, there are so many little things that you can do. And I said this to Amari, you know, that baby steps, it, it'll take you an hour and a half. If you've got a name for your business, it'll take you an hour and a half to register your business and file a little paperwork, you know, to, to, to um, be fully in legal compliance with the, the, with the state and federal mandates for identifying your business. If you have a name and you, you own your domain, you've gone to GoDaddy to make sure that, that you know, nobody else is using your name, or you've done a few internet searches to make sure your name is your own and you're not infringing on anybody else's name, go for it. You, you can change the name later. You can, you can um, you know, move your bank account. You can redo your business plan. You can, but you got to get out there. I think, you know, somebody gave me a piece of advice many years ago, a serial entrepreneur who's been wildly successful in some ventures and lost his fanny in a couple of others. <laughs> a true mark of an entrepreneur. And he said, it doesn't matter what your product is. If you believe in it and you know that there's an audience for it, there may be more obstacles, there may be less obstacles, but get out there. You know, when you look at people like, like the woman who invented Spanx or, or, you know, Elon Musk, there's no such thing as an overnight success. They didn't get to multi-billion dollar corporations by, you know, clicking their fingers. Um, you know, the, even the, the, the nice ma and pa stores, restaurants, simple products, um, any of that stuff, just go. You know, don't wait, try, try, you know, minimize your risk, of course, you know, if you can do a small investment to get started with just a little, little Facebook space or a little Instagram space, do it, 
get, get the word out, build your audience, um, and, and, you know, test your product. Um, those are all really great questions. Um, and if you have any more questions, please feel free to email us. I'm going to turn this over to Kim now, and we're going to finish up with a brief uh, enrollment services presentation. Thank you, Lauren. Okay, I'm watching the timer, five minutes. I want to keep us on, on track. So um, again, my name is Kimberly Dosey. I'm recruitment and outreach at WCC. So I want to just give you some fast facts about WASHNA and how to apply if you are interested in uh, pursuing credited classes. Uh, I've been with the college for seven years. I'm a lifetime resident of Washna County. Um, it's my pleasure to be a part of the Entrepreneur Center presentation today and the business division. Um, I believe Washna is a gem in um, our county and um, just exciting to be able to reach people and change lives. So we'll switch slides, please. So um, some really quick, fast facts about WCC. Um, we have open admissions, so it's basically you apply and you're in, okay? So that's a nice thing. Um, our tuition is affordable. I have a slide coming up that will give the cost, probably the best value for higher education in the state of Michigan. Um, three convenient locations. The main campus in um, Ann Arbor where the Entrepreneurship Center is located. Um, also, we have extension sites in Brighton, Heartland, and then there's Harriet Street in Ypsilanti. Some key takeaways um, would be that classes are always uh, flexible for anyone trying to work in higher education. Um, so we offer classes day, night, weekends, online. Um, and also with the pandemic, you can see um, we've already uh, traditionally uh, been leaders in online education and on demand. And so um, we were doing that well, like we transitioned seamlessly when we had to go from face to face to online in the winter semester. And um, recognizing though that some folks don't do well with the online format and they like the structure, um, we came out with virtual classroom. So it's basically um, a setting like this where we're in a Zoom with a teacher with a set time, your classmates, and there's interaction just as as if you were on campus. Um, that could be something that is a possibility for more flexibility in the future that we would hold on to this even when we're back face to face. No announcements, but um, we're very cutting edge. So um, I think people enjoy that virtual classroom. And then just putting out their mixed mode lab. Um, if we offer classes at WCC with a lab component, say welding or a biology lab, um, clinicals. Um, there is a portion going on currently that the lab portion meets on campus this semester and the virtual um, classroom would be the instruction time that you do from your laptop. Um, other key facts about WCC, our average class size is 18 to 22. So um, as you can see today, and there are many people um, with Mr. Terry Anthony's uh, class here that um, recognize or see that like he probably gets to know you by name you're not just a number so that's definitely the Washna difference is the 18 to 22 and becoming like an actual person that your instructors know you um, college um, options for transfer up oh, tremendous um, I wouldn't even have time to be able to go into this, but we're like a transfer university at WCC because we're Ann Arbor. People come from around the world, over a hundred countries around the world are coming to the Ann Arbor area to study at Washna. Um, and actually we enroll over 20,000 students every year at WCC. So you can pick up a class, you could pick up, uh, you know, earn a certificate like in this um, program that we spoke of today. Uh, you can earn a degree or you can actually spend some time with us to transfer to university. Next slide, please. So here's the cost real quick, uh, $95 a credit hour for in-district, um, meaning you live in Washtenaw County and across the board, um, $117 for online. So that's great. Um, wonderful things about Washtenaw, 
The highest degree we issue is a two-year associate degree. So it's a program of study with general education courses, um, about 60 to 72 credit hours. But we offer, as maybe the takeaway would be today, many certificates in different programs with very little investment in the education, meaning like a semester or two, you could actually have a certificate to get you started in an entry level position um, you know, in the industry that you're going into. Um, also, um, again, as I mentioned, partnerships to transfer are typically called articulations. So it's a partnership between Washna and a four-year university that allows you to seamlessly transfer for the four-year degree and take your credit. And in some cases, three plus one, three years of Washna, one year at the four-year institution, and you get a bachelor's degree. Next slide, please. Um, I pretty much covered this portion, so that's good, the on-demand versus the virtual classroom setting. So we'll skip on to the next. And then um, just covering, so it's free to apply. If you're interested, um, we are registering for the winter semester. Um, registration opens November 12th. The very first step is to apply for free. It takes 15 minutes. Um, so put this down. I'll also add it to the chat before we sign off wccnet.edu forward slash apply. There is a short application checklist to complete. Once um, that is complete, you are considered admitted and you're able to register. Remember, open admissions at WCC. So you apply, go through admissions, and everyone is welcome to study and have this great resource. Next slide. And here's my contact info. So reach out if you have questions or if you need guidance through the enrollment process, if you need my help in reaching out to any of these great folks today, um, I, I can be your contact person, your face for WCC. And uh, sorry, I went over two minutes, but um, I think we're good. Yes, thank you so much, Kim. And thank you to everyone who is on the call today. Um, we really appreciate it. We hope that you got some um, really cool resources and information. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to any of us and we'll make sure that it gets to the right place. Um, if you're interested, we do have the third part of our series coming up next Thursday at one o'clock, which will be all about funding. Um, so that should be really interesting. And uh, I know we already have a lot of questions. Um, so, other than that, I hope you all have a great day and thank you so much for attending this webinar. Thank you. Yes, bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.